Tonight, I want to say thank you to our union families that helped make this election happen. Despite one big disappointment that I'll get to at the end of this video, Democrats made huge gains in state-level elections last night, especially in Kentucky and Virginia. Now, first, let's go to the Kentucky race for governor. This is a state that Trump won by 30 points in 2016, and Trump also went to campaign there for Republican Governor Matt Bevin before this election. And here's what he had to say. You got to vote because... If you lose, it sends a really bad message, it just sends a bad, and they will build it up. Here's the story. If you win, they're going to make it like ho-hum. And if you lose, they're going to say Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. All right. <laughs> so did Trump face the greatest defeat in the history of the world? Yes, he did. Democratic candidate Andy Bashir handed Trump that defeat. 49.2% to 48.8%. Now, the Republican governor, Matt Bevin, hasn't conceded yet. This race was close. I guess he may try and push for a recount. We'll have to wait and see. But it's also, uh, I should make clear, this race also wasn't really just about Donald Trump, as Matt Bevin pushed or attacked Medicaid expansion and public sector pensions. So it was more than just about, you know, Donald Trump, though I'm sure... Trump had an effect on this race uh, as well. Now, let me show you a piece of Andy Bashir's speech where, among other things, he thanks unions and teachers. Tonight, I want to say thank you to our union families that helped make this election happen. I want to thank our educators. Yeah! To our educators, your courage to stand up and fight against all the bullying and name calling helped galvanize our entire state. To our educators, this is your victory. I ran on kitchen table issues, and I will govern focused on those same challenges of good jobs, health care for every Kentuckian, protecting and funding our pensions, and always supporting public education. And we are going to restore the voting rights of more than 140,000 citizens. All right. So a pretty good speech for a Democratic governor for Kentucky. Thanking unions, really thanking teachers. I mean, most of his speech almost was dedicated to talking about teachers, which you love to see. Now, um, let me get to Virginia. So in Virginia, there were also a number of very important wins. This from HuffPost. In Virginia, which has been trending Democratic for at least a decade, the party wiped out the last vestiges of Republican power by flipping both the House of Delegates and the state Senate. Democrats, under the leadership of Governor Ralph Northam, have secured what is known as a trifecta by bringing the state under unified Democratic control. The party now has the authority to not only pass a raft of stalled progressive bills, but also to shape the 2021 congressional and legislative redistricting processes, which the GOP used to its advantage in 2011. Now, one of the wins I want to highlight in Virginia is Democratic Socialist Lee Carter, who won his race 53.4% to 46.6%. And here's what Lee Carter said earlier this year about his 2017 win and the winning message that Democrats need in 2020. You know, Virginia is a swing state, but my district up until me had been held by Republicans for over 40 years. My predecessor was a member of Republican Party leadership who had essentially unlimited corporate backing. He could have spent as much money as he possibly wanted. Uh, and, uh, you know, he had been winning uh, with about 9,500 votes in my, my very small district for his entire career. Uh, and on Election Day of 2017, I was able to, to go out there and talk to uh, thousands of working class folks who had checked out of Virginia politics uh, for a very long time. And we got 11,366 people to the polls. It's by far the highest turnout for any Democrat uh, in a House 50 race uh, that we've seen in, in living memory. Uh, and this is the key. We have people by the millions in this country who have checked out of the political process. If none of the above were a candidate in the 2016 election, none of the above would have won 43 or 44 
four different states. So uh, the strategy of, of leaning into that attack, of saying, you know, if you're to the left of Barry Goldwater, they're going to call you Joseph Stalin anyway, and going out there and saying, yes, I'm a socialist. Here are the policies that are going to make your life better. We're going to put you in charge of your workplace. We're going to make sure that you have the freedom uh, to live and work and not have to worry about how you're going to put food on the table, not have to worry about how you're going to make the rent or see a doctor or put your kids through college. You make that case forcefully to people who have not traditionally voted, and they will show up because they finally feel like they have a chance to make their lives better. That's how we'll beat Donald Trump. Do you think it's possible for a socialist to win in a general election? I don't. I don't. In this, in this time, you don't? Absolutely not. Do you? No. Absolutely, I do. In fact, I think it's necessary to win this general election. Um, you know, what we saw in 2016 uh, is that Donald Trump was going out there and correctly identifying that there were things wrong with the lives of, of working class people and then giving an incorrect answer as to why that was. He was demonizing and, and otherizing people and saying, uh, you know, your life is getting worse because of folks that are coming into this country. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to go out there and tell them, yes, you know, there is a problem problem in our economy, but it's not your friends and neighbors. It's not immigrants. It's not trans folks. Right. The problem is from the top, and we are going to fix that. And the question for folks who are opposed to Bernie Sanders is, do they want to beat Donald Trump or not? If they want to beat Donald Trump, they will support him. There you go. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to start listening to the winners and stop listening to the losers. Lee Carter here is exactly right. If he can win as a Democratic Socialist in a state seat in Virginia, there's absolutely no reason why Bernie Sanders can't win against Donald Trump. In fact, all the polling shows you he will destroy Trump and he defeats Trump by wider margins in states like Michigan than any other candidate in the race does. Bernie Sanders is the choice for this general election. But enough about that. <laughs> Let's get back to these races. So another cool win here. Uh, this tweet from Jennifer Bendry of uh, HuffPost. Remember the viral photo of the woman on her bicycle who flipped off Trump's motorcade? That's Julie Briskman, and she just won a Virginia election. <laughs> so I just found that amusing. Uh, that lady in that viral photo also won a, uh, a race. Now, another update here to a Virginia race that I actually covered two years ago. So uh, this is where Virginia Democrat Shelley uh, Simmons had won a race by one vote only for it to be overturned. This from CBS News. The close 2017 race between the two went to a recount, then to court. Eventually, officials used the luck of the draw, placing the name of each candidate on a piece of paper and each piece of paper in a separate film canister. And that's how she ended up losing that race in 2017. Luck of the draw. Well, thankfully, Shelley Simmons handily defeated four-term delegate David Yancey Tuesday in a race for the 94th District in Newport News. So another awesome win here. And uh, now it's time for some bad news. So this is actually kind of a mix of, of good news and bad news. You're going to see in a second. So this is uh, from Seattle. First, this tweet from Jackson Davis of Now This News. Amazon has dumped more money into the Seattle City Council election than any group has ever spent on city politics. $1.5 million. Council member Kashima uh, Sawant says if Amazon wins in Seattle, they'll do this in cities across the country. Well, it's good and bad news. As Dina Bass of Bloomberg tweets out, candidates backed by the retail and cloud giants look unlikely to gain a majority on the nine-seat council. Although Amazon may attain its biggest prize, the defeat of its chief antagonist on the body, Kashama Sawan. So Amazon essentially bought an election against Kashama Sawan. This is somebody who led the fight for higher wages, for workers' rights, rent control, affordable housing, and renewable energy. I have no doubt she'll be back. If not in this race, I hope a run for Congress. That's where I would like to see her. But look, overall, despite that loss, this was a great night for Democrats, and it really shows you this real shift in the country away from Donald Trump and conservative policy and towards more progressive candidates that actually fight for real people.